Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, ladies. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Sunday afternoon? Just peeking down to make sure that I am live. Yes, I am. Okay. So thank you for joining us for A Queen's Roundtable Show, which happens every second and fourth Sunday of the month right here, Facebook Live. My name is Jacqueline Kabai Harrison. I am a confidence and success coach for African-American women that have coaching and or consulting businesses. Basically, I help women to eliminate all of that negative self-talk as well as self-sabotaging behaviors that prevent them from showing up the way that they want to in their business. Basically, a hindrance in terms of reaching their financial goals, right, in their business, taking their business to the next level, basically. So, I have told you a little bit about myself and about the purpose of the show. So, I have a wonderful guest here with me today that I am so excited. I am going to let her take it away and introduce herself. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for having me. I'm super excited. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm really, really excited to be here. So uh, my name is Jasmine Monk, guys, and I am the founder of Jasmine & Co. And so we are a virtual assistant agency. Uh, and we're actually a one-stop shop for small business owners where we provide general administrative assistant, I'm uh, sorry, general administrative marketing and tech services to small business owners. So we help them to pretty much become more efficient in their business. And, and yeah, um, I am based out of Arkansas and I'm a loving mother and a loving wife of two little princesses. And uh, yeah, it has been a journey, let me tell you, but it has been an amazing journey at that. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I want, I want everyone to get an idea or to get to know you a little bit and basically how your business came about. Tell us yeah. a little bit about how you grew up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I was born in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. That's where I currently reside, um, which is Southeast Arkansas. But I was raised in Dallas. So I'm used to that fast paced life, that city life. Um, and then I went to school in Houston. So I got my bachelor's and master's there, lived out there for seven years. Then my family moved back to Dallas. Then we moved back to Arkansas. So we're in Arkansas currently. And as far as my business, it actually got started when we were living in Houston. So I was a stay at home mom with my oldest daughter at the time. And my husband and I had a trucking business. And so I was helping him, you know, on the back end and on the administrative side. And I was like, you know, I want to do something for me because that was his dream. I was like, I want to do something for me. I want to do something for Jasmine. And I was like, okay, let me put my skill set together. Um, let me put what I love to do, right? And sure enough, I came across the virtual assistant industry. I never knew it, it existed. I mean, I had like administrative experience. Um, like I was a go-to person in college. Everybody was like, hey, Jasmine, can you help me with this? Can you do that? And I'm like, sure, right? And I always made like some extra cash. So um, after doing tons of research, I came across the virtual assistant industry. And here I am two years later, I haven't turn back. So I started my business in June of 2017. And from then until now, like my family has had a, a, a lot of life transitions. And um, I have still been able to run the business through all of that. And yes, I've made mistakes, um, you know, along the way, but that's part of entrepreneurship, right? Um, I've learned a lot and I've learned from my mistakes just to make sure that I don't make those same mistakes. And and yeah, here I am today. My business is probably the strongest that it's been since I've gotten started. So I'm very thankful for that. And I'm also thankful to be able to do it full time. Um, I'm very thankful for that as well. So I know some people, they have to juggle and do all of that. So it's a blessing. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of women out there that are checking this broadcast out or will check it out that are maybe on the fence, even about starting up their business. Yeah. Or maybe have just started, but maybe the, your business hasn't gained the momentum that you'd like for it to. So this is, this is really good because I think that, you know, like how you mentioned earlier, we learn from our mistakes, or at least we hope that we learn from our mistakes, right? Yeah. And this is, you know, this is going to be good information that other people can actually take, take and utilize, like learn from your mistakes, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, I'm so glad that, that you're here and that you're willing to share, you know, yeah. share, share with us and be, you know, be transparent. Absolutely. Yeah. When I got into my topic later, I'll go into some into detail on some mistakes that I've made that lost me money, just a lot of different things. I definitely will go into that later. 
Okay. Okay. So thank you for sharing with us a little bit about how your business came about. Now, a little bit more in, in terms of your why. Um, yeah. Like, do you work specifically with small businesses or maybe, you know, women? I mean, like, sure. So it's really been honestly probably about 80% women. Okay. Um, it just happened that way. And I, you know, and I just think, I don't know the reason for it. It's just kind of happened that way. But my why as far as my business. So I like servicing the small business owners. I'm really big on educating one another and networking and sharing resources. Um, one of my favorite quotes is teamwork makes the dream work because I honestly truly believe that if we all work together that we can achieve a whole lot more. Um, closed mouths don't get fed. Like you have to network to get where you need to be. I wouldn't be working on my business today if I didn't network and, and all of that. So that's super important. But I would say my why is, is, is my family, my kids. Um, just my perspective on life changed just in general when it, when it comes to my business on the moves I may make in long term and things mm -hmm. like that are my kids and not having a cap on my income and having the flexibility to still be that super mom where, you know, my daughters, they're young, but, you know, my, my oldest, I'm able to put her in dance classes and things like that because I have the flexibility to do that stuff or if I want to just take them to the park or the water park in the middle of the day, I can do that too. If I just, you know, whatever it is, right? So that flexibility and being able to have that family and, and work-life balance is super important. And I know sometimes, you know, when you're at a job, it's hard to do that. They tell you when you have to work. You have to work at this time. You have to do this on this day. And it's hard, especially if you have a commute as well. I've been there, done that, so I get it. Um, so, yeah, so definitely the flexibility with the, the work, home, work, uh, I can't even talk work life balance. Sorry. And, um, and, and the no cap on the income is just amazing. Instead of me working a job where they're saying you're making $50,000, there's no cap on how much I can make. I can keep going and going and going and going. And then also just embracing challenges. I, I've always been the type of person where I like embracing challenges and entrepreneurship is definitely that to say the least. It's, it's not an easy ride. And if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Everyone's not doing it for a reason. Right. It takes a lot of endurance and it's, it's a lot. You have to be consistent and it's just a lot of different things we endure as entrepreneurs. So I would say all of that together. And yeah, you know, I want to leave something for my kids. Like if this is still running 15 years later, my kids can run this when they, you know, become my age and I want to leave something or me and my husband, you know, for legacies to come. So I would say all of that in one is, is pretty much why I'm doing what I'm doing now. My husband's a part of it too. He plays his role and it's, it's really awesome. Oh, oh, he works the virtual assistant business with you? Kind of. So he, okay. he, he's, he, he still has what he's doing, but he does help, right? It's certain aspects that he's, he helps and hopefully we can bring him on full time at some point too. But he's very active and engaged with what I'm doing. So that's pretty awesome. Wow. That the life of a that is wonderful because you know like you said entrepreneurship is a lifestyle yeah you know, it's sure. a mindset you know and mm -hmm. when you mentioned having two younger children i know that you know for a lot of women that that can be um i don't know i don't want to say I, I guess a hindrance just for lack of better words yeah. you know because of the fact that you're managing and especially like you said if you're, if you're working a full-time job too mm -hmm. so it's like yeah. you're managing the children you know, yeah. you have a, a, a boss and they expect certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so it, it can be a lot to juggle. And how old are your girls? Three and one, three, three and 18 months. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They are. Yeah, they're, they're really small. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have an eight year old <laughs> that uh, he keeps me busy. So, you know, yeah. I know you're very, you're kept busy a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So thank you for sharing that with us. And also to mm -hmm. ladies, if any, if, if any of you out there having difficulty hearing us and or you have any questions, please just put it in the comments because I try to make sure that I check the uh, mm -hmm. comments here. Um, so that, that that way we can answer, you know, make sure that we answer your questions. Or like I said, if you can't have a difficulty hearing us, we can make the adjustments. OK, so. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So that, you know, like you said, the motivation piece in terms of that flexibility, being able to spend mm -hmm. time with your children, being able to travel 
and just kind of have a peace of mind, you know, yeah. I think is really, really important, which is why I think because African American women are like the largest, how do I say this, are the largest group of mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. And mm -hmm. your business, I'm sure, is 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 so so needed because again, you know, we are, you know, we typically have children, you know, we have families, even if children are older, right? They they still mm -hmm. They still need us, you know, exactly. our family, you know, our husbands, um, mm -hmm. immediate family. Some of us have elderly parents that we're caring for responsibilities in the church and virtual yes. assistants like yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, something that we <laughs> we got to get it, you know, no yeah. matter how, how long we fight it. You know, mm -hmm. and I know that in a little bit lady, she's going to talk to you about how to know, you know, when you when you need a virtual assistant, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I know we don't want to relinquish that that control. We think that you know we're the only ones that can do it and right. we done right. You know that that whole mentality and that that kind of goes into something else. But it's so interesting that if we always end up talking about that with every just about every guest that I interview, because mm -hmm. for some reason we as women, especially women of color, I I think from you know my experiences myself and talking to other women, we don't like to ask for help. You know, no yeah. one wants to say, oh, I need a little help over here. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And that can really like sink a business. It, it can sink you, right? Mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And if you're not on point, you're not going to be able to give your all to yourself, to your family, or to your business. Exactly. And I want to add to that too. What, you know, another thing that I've seen over the years is just, it's, it's hard to let go. Like you want to have a hundred percent control of your business, but in order for your business to truly grow and get to where it needs to be, you have to scale, you have to scale. So once I, you know, once business owner kind of business owners come over that hurdle and that obstacle, they're, they're they will see their business flour flourish because they're able to pull their stuff out of the business, which you have to, you know, it's hard to grow when you're the only person, like there's a cap, mm -hmm. you're doing everything the ball's going to drop somewhere. So I just wanted to add that on to what you were saying. You know, I'm so glad you said that too, because I'm at that point now. <laughs> and it wasn't that I didn't want to relinquish control, not that. Yeah. I just didn't feel like I could afford it. Or or I didn't feel that, I didn't feel it was worth it. I, I mean, I don't want to say worth it, but I didn't feel like I like the money would be worth yeah. it was well spent. Because I figured, yeah. oh, you know, I can do it myself. So why should I pay somebody else to do it? And I, I might need that money for something else. Yeah, that makes sense. So, and I can dive into that later too. I, can, well, I can't wait. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, want, I have a couple more questions for her ladies and she's gonna dive into her into her topic. So get your make sure you have your pen and your pad, okay? To jot some things down. Yeah. So but before we go into that, I wanted to ask you, Jasmine, how do you, and I know you touched on it a little bit, but dive a little bit more into it. Let us know how you ensure that you practice regular self-care. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for asking that. So I will say that I have been on a journey from, for this whole year, it's pretty much January to now. Um, when I had kids, I let myself go, you know, you, the kids come first, you just kind of lose yourself in the process. You're still, you're being that super mom. You have the kids and you're being a wife and all these extra things. And that's what happened to me. And it took for me to realize, okay, Jasmine, you, you have to be your best you in order to be your best for everybody else. And once I realized that, which it took me about two years to realize that um, through everything, I was, you know, I went through postpartum depression, just all that stuff. It took okay. me to realize, okay, you have to take control of the situation because nobody else can do it. Once I did that in January of this year, I started doing that. I started eating better. I was just on a healthier lifestyle. My fam my whole family's doing it. So um, I go to the gym now. I go to the gym every day. Well, Monday through Friday. Like um, I go to the gym. I just eat better and I feel so much better. Then I got my husband going and then it just trickles down to the kids and it's just great. And everybody's like looking like, what are they doing over there? And we're just doing our own thing. But just, you know, stretching and, and meditating and just taking time for you is just so important. Um, you know, with me running the business and having the kids and I have so much going on, when I go to the gym, that's like the me time that I get. I get to think, and I go to the gym in the morning. So for me, it's really good because it starts my day off on the right foot. I don't wake up all dragging. I'm refreshed. I'm energized. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take phone calls with clients and do whatever I need to do for the day. But that's 
my regimen. Every woman, every person needs to find what works for them. Get on a routine. You know, they, they say if you've done any research or studies that when you look at some of the billionaires or people that have really made it through life, they had a routine. And right. so when it comes to self-care, it is so important to have a routine. I do the same thing Monday through Friday. It does not change for me. It doesn't matter what pops up. You know, it may be a couple minutes off here or there, but I make sure I do the same thing every single day. And I have also seen results over the months from doing that. So I recommend everybody do that. You know, whether it's writing in your journal for 10 minutes in the morning, whether it's you just doing, you know, 10 or 15 minutes worth of exercise, whatever it is for you, you have to figure out what what you're going to do and what those points are. It's important that you have a routine and that you take care of yourself, because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't be your best you for everybody around you. And they they deserve the best you. So and you deserve the best you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like that about the routine as well as the working out. Like you said, for me, I work out five days a week too. Sometimes in my home, sometimes I, you know, I swim and that is part of my me time. Yeah. That's part of, you know, people like, Hey, you so, you awfully motivated to get to that workout. I'm like, yes, I am. Even though I'm exactly. tired, you know, but I still yeah. do it. And, 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 and I have to incorporate that into my schedule. It's not just, Oh, well maybe I'll fit it in this week. You exactly. know, scheduled in there, and I have a routine. There's certain days that I, that I work out, and I do certain things to work out on those particular days, right? Exactly. So keep that in mind, that's lady. Awesome. Yeah, that's wonderful, wonderful advice. I love to hear that. Um, so tell us something interesting about yourself. Oh, um, I'm a competitive bowler, so. I know bowling is just kind of one of those things where it's just fun for people. But for me, it's like on a whole nother level, my whole family bowls. I got a full ride scholarship to college on a bowling scholarship. I bowled since I was like four or five and my whole family bowls. So it's a little bit different. It's one of those things where like people like people are like, is that a sport? And I'm like, yeah, like it's definitely a sport. <laughs> OK, yeah. nice. All right. I don't think I've ever I mean. I've never met met anyone that that did it professionally. I guess you know. Yeah. And I don't miss, I don't bowl myself. I you know every now and again, but I I've, I've never really bowled. Okay, that is wonderful. Okay, and the whole family yeah. does. It. Okay, they do. You know, it's a good. I try to promote the sport. It's a good lifelong sport, and it's a good social sport. You can okay. have birthday parties. You can have corporate meetings. You can have a kid's birthday, and it's really the only sport that you know people of different types can come together. So let's say it's a disabled person or a grandparent that's like 80 years old, they can bowl with your three-year-old great-great-grandson. It's one of the only sports you can have that interaction and that social aspect. And I try to, you know, promote it in that way. And, and yeah, it's, it's a whole science to it, but I love it. I love the game, so. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I would have never, you know, I would have never thought, you know, mm -hmm. okay. See what, see, see what you learn about people. Wow. Yeah. Let, let me just acknowledge um Miss Lorraine McGee. How are you, Miss Lorraine? Hope this is hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. So that is ooh, okay. All right. So Jasmine can be when she's not working, right? When she's not uh, cooking or with well, I was gonna say with the kids, but the kids can be bowling with you. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. I love it. Okay, so what advice would you give to a young, either a younger version of yourself or maybe to other young women, maybe that have just graduated high school, maybe yeah. early adulthood. Um, oh, there's so much I can say. Um, I would just say probably one of the biggest things, which a lot of people don't realize because you're young and you're just kind of growing as a person is to just really find who you are as a person. I really feel like once we do that, it helps us to take those next steps, you know, in life. Like, for example, you know, it's the ideal thing to go to college and you're sending these kids to college and you're you're asking them to make a decision at the age of 18 on what they want to do. Pick this, you know, um, discipline and they don't know. That's why a lot of people change their majors and, and this and that. But just really just finding out who you are. College isn't for everybody, but trades aren't for everybody. And entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is not for everybody either. So once you kind of find yourself, you're the only person that can do that. Um, once you find yourself, it 
the rest will come. The next steps mm -hmm. will just come. And don't stress about it because you're going to make mistakes. We all do. We're all human. We're going to make mistakes, but that will kind of eliminate probably, you know, maybe some years or even months that can be taken off your track record and you go in a different direction if you kind of find that sooner than later. And you really sit down and think, well, who am I as a person? What do I like to do? Where do I see myself in the future? And just kind of looking at those things is super, super helpful. And I did that. So I did that. And it really, really, really helped me a lot. So I recommend that to a lot of a lot of young people. Okay. Um, I was going to, I was going to say that in terms of, you know, especially when, and I, I did that too, you know, in terms of, well, actually mine was a little bit later where, cause I, I, I actually have a, I have a master's degree in social work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to get my undergrad in social work. So I did. And then I switched, like after I got my, my BSW, then I switched Mm -hmm. Then I went back to social work. So mm -hmm. a little bit later, but nonetheless, I kind of, you know, I did switch. So I, 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 I totally agree with that. I think a lot of times we do switch up, you know, mm -hmm. but I wanted to say, or I wanted to kind of piggyback on what, what you were saying about getting to know yourself. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes, especially like if we get married young, when I say mm -hmm. young, I mean like maybe early to mid twenties mm -hmm. and we begin raising children. I think, it's even, you know, I, I think that a lot of times when women reach their maybe late 30s through mid 40s, they are going through like a metamorphosis, you know, or trying to like get back to like, well, who was I? You know, what, what was important to me? I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, you mm -hmm. know, so I think that that's that's extremely important. It's like you like like, like you like you were talking about like maybe early adulthood or either sometimes a little bit later in life, people are doing it. And even if that's ongoing, just because mm -hmm. you might have wanted to do something in your early 20s or mid 20s, let's just say, maybe when you reach your 40s or your 50s, you, you, you've changed, you've evolved as a person, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a different perspective. You have a different perspective on things. So it may change again, exactly. and that's exactly. fine, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but, but, de but de definitely do what you have to do, ladies. Yeah. Whether you meditate, whether you um, mm -hmm. uh, journal, as she mentioned before, whatever you do to kind of be one with yourself and really be true, true to yourself about yeah. what you want, what you need and what feels good to you. Exactly. And I want to add on to that, too. The sky mm -hmm. is the limit. So, you know, people look at these celebrities and these people and they think yeah. some of them may have been born into it. And but others, they work their way to the top. So as long as you believe that you can do something, and you can achieve it, you can do it. That's within you and that's internal and you have to have that drive to want to go get it and to want to, you know, whatever your aspirations are to go get it and go do it and make it happen because nothing's going to be handed to you. It, you know, it's this thing called life. It's just not going to happen like that. You have to go grab it by the horns and be aggressive to get to where you need to be. And it's just kind of how it is. And everyone's doing that. Well, most people are doing that and that's really what it takes to, to get there. So I just want to throw that out there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to just say, too, thank you. Hi, Mary. How are you this Sunday afternoon? Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> okay. So I want to move into our topic, ladies. And her topic yeah. is the Small Business Owner's Guide to Hiring a Virtual Assistant. So I want you to go ahead and segue into that. Yeah. As well as tell, you know, in that, tell us how you actually serve your clients. Absolutely. Okay. So kind of like I mentioned earlier in my introduction, I, I help small business owners. Um, I'm part of their team. I'm an extended member of their team where we par I call us partners. Uh, we have a partnership where I provide general administration, pretty much anything under that umbrella. So it could be data mining research. It could be phone support. It can be email and calendar management. There's so many things under that umbrella, just general admin stuff. Um, and then Pretty much anything under the marketing umbrella. So that can be email marketing, blogs, newsletters, social media. We help with lead generation. We help with building funnels, that whole caboodle. We do all of that. Um, and then as well as tech services. So if you are in the online space, you know what I'm talking about. We have this email marketing system. We have our website and we need to build a funnel. We have all these things. We have a, an appointment booking calendar system and we have to link all that together. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. So we provide those tech services to take that out small business owners 
hands as well. So we kind of do all of that. And so we've worked with coaches and authors and speakers, as well as a, another, a, a number of other industries as well. But those are kind of the, the main, I would say probably like 70% of what we've gotten over the years. But we've worked with daycares, we've worked with cleaning businesses, construction businesses, you name it, we, we've done it. We've provided you know, some type of service for them. So uh, one thing I kind of want to throw out there is a couple of things. So whether you're in the early stages of starting your business or whether you are seasoned, um, at some point you want to grow your business. At least I, I hope that's everyone's goal. Everyone's goal is, is to grow. And so one of the only ways to do that is to start outsourcing. And so when people hear the word outsourcing, some people are familiar with what it is, but some people think big, like, wait, kind of like how you mentioned earlier, Jacqueline, like, do I have the money for that? Right. And so that's kind of where virtual assistants come into play. So we, we have most definitely evolved over the years and we're like at our prime right now because it's a great way to help you scale in your business and for you to grow. And I'll kind of explain how that happens. So let's say you're a new business owner and you know, you, you're you taking on all of the work, right? Let's say you make candles. You're making all of the candles, you're fulfilling the orders, but at some point you're doing that, you're doing accounting, you're, you're trying to talk to new clients to get the work. You're, you're playing, you're, you're wearing 50 hats. So when we first get started, I did it, I get it. We, we've all been there, done that. And some of us are still doing it now, we're wearing 50 hats and it's overwhelming. You become overwhelming and it's a lot. And so you want to eliminate that. So I just kind of want to tell you about this. Virtual assistants, they're not, a, you know, a thousand dollars plus. I will tell you this. You want to look at a few things when you're looking to outsource. Number one is what do you like? hate what is taking away too much of your time so if you're spending 10 or 20 hours on social media a week no okay. you're not using your time efficiently at all you should be spending that on developing new content looking at projections or whatever it may be in your business you shouldn't be spending it trying to put some posts on social media right number two is y'all hear that because i know that's yeah, that's important. What is taking up too much time? So is it social media or, you know, is it client phone calls? What is it for you? Because then those you want to start looking at filling those those spaces. The second thing. So that's number one. The second thing I want you guys to think about is what do you what do you like doing the least in your business and what aren't what are you not good at? So are you not good at graphic design? Are you not good at copywriting, like writing your own copy for emails or even like social media posts or your website? Things like that, right? And then number three, I want you to look at how much can you put to the side monthly mm -hmm. to bring on somebody to help you with the, the number one and number two. So people are like, well, I can't afford it. Yes, you can. If you go to Starbucks every day, if you're spending extra money, whether it's out of personal or your business account, you can put aside $200 if you're serious about really taking your business to the next level. When you put it in perspective, think about all the extra money you're throwing out there. People go to Starbucks every day. When you add that up, Starbucks is not cheap. It's not. You know, you could be using that Starbucks money to bring on somebody to bring on somebody to help you with social media in your business so you don't have to worry about that and you could spend your time on something else. So, we, you know, each person, you know, you have to put this in perspective for your lifestyle and your business, right? But those are things to look at. So I want to go over that again. Those are three things. Please. Whether you're just starting or your season, those are the three things that I tell everybody to look at first, and then we'll kind of take take next steps after that. It's just kind of get your mind thinking. So number one is what is taking up way too much time each week in your business or month? You can even look at the monthly basis, right? Number two is what do you like doing the least in your business and what like are you not that good at that you can pass off that somebody's probably better at? And then number three is your budget. What, how much do you have to put aside of, you know, of, of some extra money to be able to, to hire somebody to do number one and number two of what we just talked about? Mm, you know what? Ooh, Jasmine, that, that is phenomenal. Let me just take a quick second. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Lisa's comment is delegation and outsourcing are critical to surviving Keeping and keeping stress at a minimum. I know that's Absolutely. right. Because you know what? Yeah. I am not a tech person at yeah. all. And literally, like even doing something like creating my funnel system. Yeah. 
doing those lead magnets. Oh my God. I've been up to like maybe two or three o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. why in the heck is this button not working? Yeah. You know, like literally like pulling my hair out, you know. Mm -hmm. So and I know probably some of you know, somebody else probably is out there doing the same thing. If that's not your area of expertise. Now yeah. some 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 people are whiz at it. Maybe mm -hmm. you 19, 20, 24 years old. I don't know, you a whiz at it. But yeah. like, you know, when I was when I was in high in uh, not high school. When I was in college, I was still I was using the word processor, you know. So I mean, just you know, all of the different things. So, look, don't don't laugh at me. This is this is real talk now. Real talk. Okay, okay. But you know, it's like, and when people were talking about a funnel, I was like, what the heck is that? What is a yeah. funnel? What are you funneling? You know. Mm -hmm. So and it's like now, like I said, I'm just kind of really taking a hold of like, wow. And and be honest with you, Jazz, and I kind of stumbled upon it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I made a decision like, oh, you know, I really need this and that, you know, mm -hmm. but things such as like, like you said, putting out that content and even just the time, like, because mm -hmm. I know for me, I sit there and I say, okay, I want to email my list. Mm -hmm. and, and also, guys, like if, when you join in, if this is an issue for you or a, a, you agree, like, you know, type something in the comments, yeah. but it's like even creating, like sending out two or three emails a week to me was like overwhelming. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm trying to be live. I'm trying to keep up with the emails. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I'm trying to post all of these different things, you know, and, and, and again, if you're not doing it full time, yeah. Or even if you are doing it full time, if it's new to you, you know, and you're only one person, you know, you, you can't be doing all, you know, you can do it, but some things are going to fall to the side or maybe you won't be as consistent. And we know that that consistency piece is an important piece to maintaining yeah. a successful business. You know, Absolutely. so I really, that, that is such good advice. So Absolutely. making a list of different things that you don't like to do, mm -hmm. but that you like to do least. Yeah. And what was the other one? Um, just what's taking up too much of your time. You need to, you need to get rid of that because you can okay. be using time, you know. So, so I guess, so to be mindful, and even if you have yeah. to maybe write it down and really yeah. figure out how much time you're spending, mm -hmm. right, doing that. Exactly. Okay. So at least that way, I guess, like, and then, okay, so you take a look at that mm -hmm. and you say, wow, okay, this is what I come up with. Then at that point, is that when they would, would, would contact you? Yeah, exactly. So then we can kind of have a consultation. So once you kind of look at those things, I would kind of write down maybe the top three things that you know, you'll obviously from number one and number two have some things you come up with. And if it's like a whole list of things, just kind of narrow it down to the top two or three and then bring that to the consultation so we can discuss. And you'll be like, Jazz, this is my situation. Spending too much time on this. I think I need help with this. And I also want to know your goals, where you're where you're headed and what you're trying to do. And I will also determine, you know, what I feel and what I recommend as a suggestion on what you should outsource first and, and kind of where we can help you. Okay, I like that. What you can, what you should outsource first. Okay, all right. You know, if you have a launch coming up, or if you are trying to build your list, you know, it's a lot of different scenarios. It just kind of depends, and what you wrote down compared to your goals and and what you have coming up, we can kind of determine that. Now, when you when you mention that about a launch, um, do you? And, and I don't know, virtual assistants laps over into this, but what about like the marketing piece? Like, are you able to, I, I don't know, is that part of it? Do you kind of talk to people about, well, you know, since you got the launch coming out, maybe you should do, maybe we should do this or like. Yep, sure do. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, a couple of different type of launches and okay. they're all really similar as far, you know, when you really look at the, diaphragm of it but they're all okay. you know making their own way so yeah we'll talk about all of that and really kind of lay it out so i'm a visual person so i like building you know a map and a workflow like this we'll do this first and we'll do this and you know i like seeing things from a to z you know and i like seeing the end goal and then kind of working backwards and setting those timelines and, and stuff like that so yeah we would discuss that too wow yeah and i want to i'll say this too so Virtual assistant, there are different types of virtual assistants. Okay, good. There are some really niche down ones. Like if you're, you know, if you just need copywriting, you need help writing copy, there are copywriter VAs. If you need just web development, 
you know, there are some web developers that code. And if you don't want to get that extensive, then there are some that can just do really great with templates. Um, there are what are called general VAs, where they can do a little bit of everything. I mean, there there's our social media managers and marketer VAs. Okay. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, on social media. So, like, with my agency, we do everything. Like, we're a one-stop shop. When you think of Walmart and Target, we're that Target. Um, That's how we kind of built our business model where, you know, when you kind of go on Walmart, you don't really know what to expect. The service may be bad. It's just, it's you know, you don't really know what to expect. You get what you pay for. When we go on Target, people pay that extra little money, that that tier, to get that better customer service, to get the better experience, as well as a better product. Um, Or, you know, so that's kind of how we our business model set up is like Target. So we provide everything. But there are some people, some freelancers that they're just specific in that one thing. And then you have beginner, intermediate and advanced. And that will depend on your budget, too. Like I'll give you an example for me when I first started and I needed to bring on a team member. I didn't have a huge, huge budget, but just from management experience experience in the past, I like hiring new people. And the reason is, is because if they're itching and willing to learn and they want to take on challenges, I can train them exactly. I can mold them how I want them to be for my company and not saying anything's wrong with seasoned people. It, you know, it's not, but just that just worked and works for me. So I like grabbing new VAs that want to learn. And I give them that experience. I teach them what they're wanting to know and what they're wanting to learn. If they want to be a, a social media VA, I take them by the horns and I mentor them and I train them and I push them, you know, and help them with that. So there are different kind of VAs out there. I like that. Yeah. You know, that you're willing to, you know, take people and uh, train them. Yeah. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's, uh, you know, that's the time so- what works for you. You know, you may yeah. want a more season. You know, some people are like, you have to have, you know, if, if You'll see in, in some Facebook groups, you'll see some people, they're like, well, I'm looking for a VA that has five years of experience, which is fine. You can pick your specifications and you should be as specific, specific as you want to be because it's your business. Right. You 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 come up with the, the requirements and expectations. Everybody's different on what they're looking for and what they want in your business. And you should be very thorough, be very, very thorough on what you're looking for. So if they need to have seven years in the game, right. And they need to have seven years, but if they if they have seven years, also know you're going to be paying yeah, for that yeah. seven years. So, so they have to align the, the the their experience with the price. So you know what I mean. I'm and I'm so glad you are. You know what you are phenomenal. I can tell we kind of like we kind of think alike. When I say think yeah. alike, I mean I'm a very detailed step by step person, and I I, mm-hmm. I can I can tell that from talking with you now the way you're explaining things about how mm-hmm. you broke it down. In terms of what you know, to be clear, what you're looking for, mm-hmm. you know, what you what you feel like you need help with, so on and so forth, what your budget is, and how you broke it down about their specific VA. So, like when people are researching, once you know what you need, then you could you know see if it's, if they're like a one stop shop like you, or mm-hmm. if they, you know if they specialize in a particular thing. Okay, exactly. I wanted to mention those things, and I wanted to say thank you. We have a Dewinda that joined us. And Miss Olivia, hello. hello, ladies. Thank you so much for joining. Now, the million dollar question from uh, Dewinda, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. She said, What is the cost for hiring a VA? Very, very good question. So it varies. Um, I'll give you a couple of pointers that usually business owners don't get. Um, you have cheaper labor overseas. And then, you know, you have people in the U.S. where it's a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit different. So I will give you some tips. When you're dealing with VAs overseas, that's usually a lot of people's go-tos, especially when they first get started. They don't have a lot of money. You don't have a huge budget. You can find people four or five dollars an hour over there. Um, But sometimes the language barrier can be a problem. I have seen that quite a bit. So you have to know what you're dealing with. You go with the cheaper labor and not all not all situations are like that, but there are some like that. So that may be a challenge that you can totally face. So it just kind of depends on you. If you set your budget, if you only have a hundred dollars a month to spend, you need to use that hundred dollars wisely, especially depending on what you're needing help with. And so you can be very specific. Hey, this is my budget. This was this is what I'm looking for. And somebody will come to the table. So you have your cheaper labor overseas, India and the Philippines. I um, mean, then here in the U.S., obviously, our rates are a little higher because we have to live. You know, we have to be able to survive. <laughs> right. 
So, um, you know, anywhere from here in the U.S. can be ten dollars and up, ten dollars, fifteen, twenty. Then you start getting into your more seasoned, um, you know, freelancers and agencies, twenty-five, thirty dollars and up. But usually, virtual assistants have what are called packages, and so they work out with hours. Um, it kind of depends. Some people work on a per project basis. Some people like working hourly, um, and then most people have packages too. Some people have all of them, and you'll just have to talk to each VA to see what they offer. But the packages are really good. You can buy like five or ten hours for the month, however many you think you need. So let's say you need to outsource your newsletter. Let's say you want to send out, you know, one newsletter a week and and one email a week, you know, and then you're like, this is what I need. Is it's my budget, and you guys can kind of negotiate because at the end of the day, all the all the VAs we're running our own businesses, and so we live off of referrals. We want to do an amazing job for you, the most amazing job we can, so that you can come back and, and do another service with us or continue services, or you refer your next you know business partner or, or whatever. To that. Okay. okay. So it just kind of depends, you know, if you, if your budget's only fifty dollars, okay. You have to see what you can get until your budget can increase and then you can, you know, get more things done. So it just kind of depends. I mean, it just really depends. But yes, you can get cheaper labor overseas, but you just have to know you get what you pay for in some situations. So you have to be mindful of that. And then, you know, in the U.S., you, it, the rates will be a little bit higher. So you said so probably about fifteen dollars in a. Yeah, probably here in the U.S. Yeah. And then and then you could get like packages where. They do, you know, depending on the person's need and what they can afford, they do like like packages. Exactly. Of, you know, to do. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's so, I, I'm sorry, I was just laughing because I don't know. I never really thought about like necessarily like overseas. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, like, when I think of overseas, I think of, um, you know, making cars overseas or like a lot uh, of things, you know what I mean, that are made in Taiwan and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I hadn't really thought about that, like in terms of this type of work, but oh, yeah, I think it makes sense. And then what you brought up in terms of the concerns, like you said, I guess you have to weigh everything out, you know, mm -hmm. like it's exactly. English, language and, you mm -hmm. know, how, you know, things of that nature. Um, yeah. and, okay. and you also want to look at, so, and you brought up a good point with English being their first language, most when you're putting, you know, when you're looking for a VA, most definitely put that in there. Unless you're looking for somebody that can speak another language, you have to reiterate that. But it also depends on the service that you're needing done, what you're needing help with. Because if it's like tech stuff, yeah. it, you know, they don't have to know a whole lot of English to integrate systems together. But if they're doing copywriting or, or something or proofreading, yeah, we want to be mindful of that. So it kind of depends on the service that you're needing to. And for example, with email marketing, let's say you want to send out one email a week. You have to think, are you providing a copy? You're just wanting them to schedule and make right. it pretty? Or are you wanting them to come up with a copy and do the whole thing? And so that's where that'll come into play to be like, should I go a little bit cheaper on this or should I go a little higher? You know, and, and some of the people that are five or six dollars an hour, it just kind of depends. You know, you may get a great one, you may not get a great one. It's just kind of one of those things where I've seen some people, they were very successful in hiring their first VA and they stay with them a long time. But then I've seen others where it wasn't a really great experience and they weren't a fit for each other. Right. Because just because you hire a VA doesn't mean you guys will mesh well and that they're a good right. asset to your company. So it's just like any other job. You want to make sure you guys mesh well, that you click yes. and you vibe and that you're somewhat similar and you can talk with them and just things mm -hmm. like that you want to look for. Like if you were at any other job and you were in a manager position, but the only difference is this is your business and you can run it how you want to run it. Mm -hmm. You know what? So let me let me say a couple of things. First, I want to say, Kanika, thank you for joining us. Hello, hello. And Olivia, I think I said hello to you. And but we got a couple of comments. So Olivia's comment or question is, oh, <laughs> Nessie, hi, how you doing? Thank you for joining. Olivia said, should I hire a young VA? And DeWinda said, Jasmine, can you contact me? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I will make sure I do that. Um, as far as hiring a young VA, um, I'll say this. You know, I've seen some people hire some college students, which is fine because millennials, like I'm a millennial myself, we're into technology heavy. So it's a good chance they can help you with social media. They can help you with those things that you need. Um, but just also look at their experience. It doesn't matter if they're young or older. You have to look at what they're bringing to the table. And again, are they a beginner VA? Do they have experience of skin in the game? And what are you looking for in your bit? Like, what do you need in your business? And they can, can they provide what you need? 
Okay. You know, younger, younger, older, that, that doesn't matter because you, know, you have some older people that get into the VA game in their 40s, but mm-hmm. they don't really have the you know experience. So the age has nothing to do with right. anything. Hopefully, make sure you find someone that can do what you need to do. And then I will definitely contact you, uh, Twinda. You know what I'm thinking? And um, I was trying to, I'm trying to hold it in, but you know, I get a little forgetful at times. But like, for example, like I know this is something I'm going through. Um, like I kind of, I, I know like breaking off into different social media platforms like i'm kind of familiar i'm familiar with facebook Mm -hmm. but like i want to build up my instagram account yeah you know um so i guess you 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 will be able to give advice on something like like that as well yeah absolutely i'll be able to um i'll just throw a tip out there for free for you guys um because again you know i'm really big into sharing resources you don't want to try to do too many platforms at once you want to pick one or two to see like, what works okay, two with the most, right? Yeah, yeah, one or two, and 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 try those, try them out, and you just you really need to first before that know who your target audience is, and that will kind of determine what platforms we look at in the first place. Okay. Some people just be like, well, I'm just gonna go on Facebook and LinkedIn. Well, whoa, who's your target audience? Because if it's millennials or just depending on who it is, they may be on Instagram. That may be where we need to look and to build your platform and target. So it just kind of depends. But yeah, um, I can, you know, if this is if this is too much, you can just you know just tell me to pump the brakes. But in terms of like target population, like is it, would Instagram be more of a millennial audience? You think or yes, um, it, it is, um, and it just kind of so. depends on what <laughs> what product or service you're okay. and you're providing, and also who your target audience is. Okay. But yes, all the millennials, they're there on Snapchat, they're on Instagram, all of those platforms like that. Yeah, I don't even know. I barely even know what a Snapchat is. <laughs> just it's, kind of like, it's kind of like Instagram, but you can like just snap really quick. But like, you know, you have Instagram mm-hmm. photos and like Facebook uh, stories. I'm sorry, Instagram stories and Facebook stories. It's kind of like that. And then you can like okay. build your friends list and do that whole thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking back at the comments now. Just to see if I missed anything. Okay. Okay. I hope I got everybody's question. Olivia, I hope that that answered your question. Because Olivia was the one that asked, um, should I hire a young VA? And then her next oh. question, should I? <laughs> <laughs> Did she answer the question? Um, Olivia. <laughs> Oh, I think she said, Lord me either. I think she's referring to Snapchat. Yeah. I keep hearing the, the uh, talk about it, but I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm dealing with Facebook and Instagram, and I'm on LinkedIn. That's about all I can. That's about all my, my brain. Oh, yeah, LinkedIn is a really good platform. Because, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's just because. Oh, she said you answered her question. Okay, thank you, Olivia. Okay, so she said you answered it. So that was very, very informative. Okay. Um, I know I, I learned a lot. <laughs> so, ladies, if you have any other questions, you know, please, you can leave it here. Or obviously, she's going to tell us um, where you can contact her, how you can get a hold of her. I think I think we pretty much touched base on everything. You you shared some mm-hmm. great some great advice, and, you know, some some things for them to look at and to take into consideration when thinking, mm-hmm. when, you know, when to reach out to a virtual assistant. And what the benefits are now, and I know you. I know you're a one-stop shop. Now, how how would they get a, get a hold of you? Let's say someone is watching the replay. Can you mm-hmm. just tell us, like, if they should go to your Facebook page, if there's a website, yeah. or if you're running any specials right now? Absolutely. Um. So definitely Facebook and and my website. So my website is, and I can go back and put this. I'll okay. actually um, I'll put this in the in the comments too. But uh, our website is jasmineandco.org. And then our Facebook page, which I'm pretty active on, is Jasmine and Co. Team. And um, yeah, if you know, if you just have any questions, just let me know. I love to talk, and I'm really passionate about this stuff because I just want to see us all do great. Um, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Jacqueline, like there are so many, um, you know, Black women that are opening businesses and that are just taking that leap. However, we can help each other. I want to be there to help and play my role and play my part. And so if you just have a question, you know, if we don't end up working together, that's fine. Like I'll answer your questions if you need to know anything or, you know, I like giving tips and tricks and stuff like that too. So I'll also leave, 
you know, my information in the comments. And if you're watching this on the replay, and you have a question, do hashtag replay and stick it in there. And I'll make sure I'll go in and, and answer questions. And Or Jacqueline will let me know that one's there if I, if I miss one. Yep, I sure will. Yes, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. And I, I appreciate, you know, your willingness to answer questions and, you know, and just to kind of be honest about it, you know, because... Yeah. I know for, for me, it's, it's a big turnoff when, when, when people start talking about things and it's like, you know, um, I don't want to, you know, the, the only way, like the only, I'm the only virtual assistant out there and this is the only way to do it. And like things mm -hmm. like that, like are, are really a turnoff to me. Like I'm the mm -hmm. type of person, I like to know what my options are. Yeah, and, absolutely. And maybe you can put something on the table that I can think about, like, you know, in terms of what is it that you want done? Mm -hmm. and, you know, like the benefits of maybe going overseas and, you know, so on and so forth. Because to me that when you have more information, you're able to make a better or a more informed decision. Absolutely. You know? and, and and also, too, that that helps to, you know, add to, to, to that person's credibility and to just them being honest and having a sense of integrity. I know that those things are major with me. If I feel like a person mm -hmm. doesn't have a sense of integrity, then I'm not going to want to work with them. Absolutely. You no, know, yeah. and, and they may not they may not want to work with you right now. They may not be ready. But later mm -hmm. on down the line, oh yeah, I remember, you know, this person here and you know, she was very genuine, she was very open, she was very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And you know, to me it's like it really shows that I mean, yes, this is your business, but you also want to make sure that it's a good fit. And just even acknowledging that it you know, it may not be a good fit, just like when you get a therapist or you know, just exactly. work with like you signed up for one on one coaching with somebody and that for whatever the reason, it just may not be a good fit. Maybe they do have the knowledge, but it's mm -hmm. just not a good fit, you know, exactly. but I really, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. No problem. You know, oh, if, okay. if, I see you added your, your website. Okay. Yeah, I added it. So if you guys have questions, you know, you can shoot me a message on the on the Facebook page and I'll be happy to answer if you want to chat, if you're interested in possibly working together, all of that. And some, I, I'm definitely here for you guys. So, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for those that have joined us live. I know everyone is terribly busy. This is, you know, everybody's Sunday afternoon. We kind of relaxing and spending time with family. Thank you so much for joining us for a Queens Roundtable Show, which happens every second and fourth Sunday of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm your host, Jacqueline Kabai Harrison, and. I am a confidence and success coach for African-American women that have coaching and or consulting businesses. Again, I help women to work to eliminate all of that negative self-talk as well as self-sabotaging behaviors that prevent you from taking your business to the next level. So please join me every second and fourth Sunday of the month. We have a different entrepreneur on that basically shares good information with us for business owners. Thank you so much, Miss Jasmine. And did, did you Thank have you any, for other questions, any other questions or comments before we close out? Um, I'll just say, guys, you know, just keep pushing. You know, the road is not supposed to be easy, but it's all within us internally. You just have to find it. Find that drive. Find your why, which is fair. We didn't get into a whole lot of that today, but you need to find your why and, and where it is you're trying to go and what you're really trying to do. And you can do it. The sky's the limit. As long as you can believe it, you can definitely achieve it. And Bringing this back up, like I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite quotes is teamwork makes the dream work. And the reason I love that quote is because truly, you know, together we can achieve so much more if we work together. And so if we all come together as a force, all of our businesses can just grow and thrive. And that should be the ultimate goal is just to help everybody get out of their, their current situation. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. Have a good afternoon, ladies. Thank you for joining, and thank you for those that will catch the replay. Also, two ladies, tag a coach and share the broadcast out. All right. Until next time.